I've been doing an experiment over the past month or so. Uh, I've been editing all my YouTube videos and all my photos on an iPad Pro. And the reason I decided to try this little experiment is that I always felt that my 15 inch MacBook Pro is slightly too heavy to uh, travel with, like slightly too bulky. And uh, also I've been kind of frustrated with Adobe Premiere and like I didn't, really don't like that software that much. It's really nice to be able to have a small device to work on that I can carry with me from room to room or maybe sit in the sofa while my son is playing besides me or whatever. And with a laptop it is a little like a little bit too clunky to always be able to do that in a simple way. So that was what kind of attracted me to trying the iPad Pro as a primary workstation. So I just want to summarize what uh, my findings have been uh, trying to use the iPad Pro for photo and video editing over around six weeks of time. So I actually been wanting to try an iPad Pro for photo and video editing for a long time, but it hasn't been until iPad OS was announced that I thought uh, the time was ready to actually try it because earlier there were no like good file uh, management capabilities on iOS. So basically everything was imported to the camera roll and there were no easy ways, for example, to find all the raw photos that I had on the camera roll and then easily delete them to free up space, which made it practically impossible to work seriously with uh, photo editing on the iPad Pro or any iPad for that matter. Uh, but with the new file uh, handling capabilities and also with uh, the desktop class browser with Safari on iPad OS, it actually is uh, quite doable to uh, do photo and video editing in a serious fashion on the iPad Pro. And you could even connect devices, uh, basically any device that you can connect to your MacBook Pro, you can connect to the iPad Pro. And it even has the same USB-C ports. So, uh, it's very easy to attach memory cards, import photos and videos. You can even use a mouse if you want to, and you can of course easily use your Bluetooth keyboard with the iPad Pro. So this is really nice. I also decided to purchase the pen for the iPad Pro um, to uh, see if that could heighten the experience somehow. And uh, Actually, I am happy I purchased the pen because the first thing you notice when you start to work seriously for a few hours on the iPad Pro is that it is very bad ergonomically. Like you need a big screen to be able to do serious work. That is why you buy an iPad uh, over an iPhone. But uh, when you have to move your arm a lot back and forth, uh, you quickly realize that it is not very good for your elbow or your arm muscles. It is very inergonomic. And if you manage to find a position where your arm can rest, then you get a weird position with your head instead. So uh, that is something that I still think that uh, a desktop computer or a MacBook Pro connected to a screen and a real mouse and a keyboard does a lot better. You don't get any issues with ergonomics. Uh, you don't have to move your hand a lot. And that is actually a good thing with the pen for the iPad Pro. If you have to work on an iPad Pro, I really recommend you to get the pen because then you can actually have your hand quite still and reach any part of the screen with the pen, which makes it a lot easier on your arm. Um, so the pen is good for ergonomics and also of course it's nice to be able to take notes with the pen and, and uh, have more precision when you're editing video. Um, if you're planning to do serious work on iPad Pro, I really recommend you to get the pen. For software I uh, used uh, a video editing software called LumaFusion, which is an amazingly good app for video editing. It basically takes all the most needed features but nothing else. And for my video editing style where I do pretty basic stuff most of the time, uh, LumaFusion was um, exactly what I needed. A really good video editing software. I like some of the features that do not exist in Premiere. For example, the ability to easily uh, put all your project files and original video source files and everything into a zip file that you can export and save on an external hard drive when you're done with a project and then easily import it again in case you need it later. That's a really nice feature. And small details like, for example, showing you very simply which clips you have used uh, in your main video and which ones you haven't. 
Uh, you can see these in Premiere, but it is not as intuitive or as nicely done. And there are a lot of details like this uh, that I find that LumaFusion has really managed to uh, uh, make the most out of the small screen on the iPad. So if you will do video editing on the iPad, I really recommend LumaFusion. And it actually also works for iPhones. I haven't tried that though. And for photo editing, um, I uh, chose to use Lightroom CC. And actually it's great. It has improved a lot over the past few years. And uh, now when you can import raw files from the file system on your iPad, it is great. And I also love the syncing between devices. So you, I can import photos on my iPad and continue editing them later on my uh, computer. And even when I'm on the go, for example, maybe I imported photos two hours ago, started editing them, and then I'm on a bus. I can just bring up my iPhone and continue editing them or pick one and post it to Instagram. Super smooth. I love that thing. Um, earlier, I only worked with uh, Adobe Lightroom Classic, CC Classic. Um, and even though I might actually prefer the Classic because it has a lot more features, the syncing capabilities of Lightroom CC is great and it's actually a great application to edit photos quickly and easily on the iPad. Still though, uh, what bothered me a lot was the ergonomics. Like for example, when I go through hundreds of photos and put uh, stars or ratings or um, uh, mark them for deletion, I have to do this like hand movement that is like a little bit too big to be easy on my arm and uh, when you work seriously for extended periods of time on the iPad, I think it's that's like unfortunately the kind of deal breaker for me continuing to use the iPad as my primary computer that it is too bad ergonomically. Uh, and that really sucks because I love the experience otherwise. Sure, iPadOS has been really, really buggy, especially the, the file handling. Uh, it has hung a lot and all sorts of weird bugs. Uh, but I expect all of that to be sorted out now that they released the first like stable version of iPadOS. And over the coming months, I'm sure they will fix that. So that's maybe not even an issue to bring up. And Otherwise, for uh, more advanced photo editing, the kind of editing that you would do in Photoshop on a computer, uh, I used, um, I think it was called Aperture. A great application, uh, a little bit hard to learn if you use the Photoshop, like, but it works great and it has everything you need. I use that for, for example, video thumbnails for YouTube. Um, so what is the iPad Pro good for then? I would say, uh, in my situation right now, I think I will go back to using my MacBook Pro uh, because uh, I find it better ergonomically and I actually uh, enjoy having a bigger screen and, and, and all of that using a regular mouse. Uh, uh, if I would have been traveling a lot more, say that I would have been traveling almost every week and if I would uh, have to do a lot of work while on the road, I would actually use an iPad Pro as my primary working computer, I think. Because what it does really well, it is extremely powerful. Uh, it feels exactly as powerful as my super expensive MacBook Pro, but it is only like 500 grams, super uh, small and lightweight. Uh, still, you can edit and export a video in 4K uh, without it even breaking a sweat. It's actually incredible how powerful that small device is. And also it's really affordable. I mean, uh, my MacBook Pro uh, cost like a used car with a one terabyte drive, but the iPad Pro with a 256 gigabyte drive, it's actually quite affordable. It, it is, uh, if you're on a budget and need a powerful small device that is affordable, the iPad Pro is great. Yeah. So these were some quick thoughts about the new iPad Pro and the even newer iPad OS. Uh, I love the device, I will probably continue using it a lot when I travel, but as a workstation it's a little bit bad ergonomically, for me at least. Uh, but uh, if you are traveling a lot and need a super powerful and super compact uh, powerful computer, and if you like using a pen and a touchscreen, then the iPad Pro is definitely for you. That's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my photography newsletter that comes out once a month with my greatest inspiration, tips about gear, tips about great photographers and all of that. Go sign up at mwroll.com to my newsletter. 
please leave a like on this video if you did like it it helps my channel a lot and don't forget to subscribe i try to post videos every week about photography last but not least go check out my instagram mwroll on instagram you can see all of my photography work there that's it for this video see you soon again over and out bye